Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Don with Abazi Lawn Landscape. As you guys know, so uh, today I figured that I would give you guys my honest thoughts about the vacuum system for the V-Ride 2. Um, I know I said in the review video for this mower, if you haven't seen the review video for this mower yet, go check it out and you'll kind of see where I'm coming from and a lot of points of this. But yeah, so I figured I would tell you guys what I think about this and you guys, what you should think if you're gonna buy one of these, what you want to kind of look into and what you want to think about it. So we'll start off the way it works. So there's a mounting bracket that holds it on right here, and right here, and this holds on the catcher. You have your tube that runs down here, and then here is your vacuum system. So it's a powered, powered catcher. So it has a belt that runs from your, your far right pulley, and it runs through a system of pulleys here and it spins a fan in here and the fan will throw the grass up into the catcher. So it's not just like the PA from the decks pushing it in here, but you have a whole, you know, power driven bag bagger on here. So this was the first one I think that ever came, ever came out with a stand on, or uh, with a, uh, with a stand on mower. It's like the first one that I think they've had. I know like now Toro has one, a couple of aftermarket companies make one, but this was like the first from the manufacturer one that they started to make. Um, that's it's one of the reasons that I bought this mower. So, cause I wanted the ability to bag before this, I was using the metal catchers cause we bag a ton of grass. So if you're going to be using this, you know, fall for leaves and spring, you might like it a little more than someone who has to use it all day long, every day. Cause we bag about 75% of our clients. So we're using this hours in and out every single week. So that's one of the reasons why I bought this mower is cause I wanted the ability to bag and have the big capacity. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been your average, your vacuum system, but I've had a lot of problems with it. So that's kind of why I wanted to, you know, make this video and tell you guys what my honest thoughts about it were. So um, when you're mowing just regular weekly grass, you know, slightly damp or dry, you know, cutting off anywhere from like one to three inches. This thing's amazing. It'll it'll bag up perfectly. It won't leave anything on the ground. It'll everything will go right into here. It'll pack it completely full to the top. You'll fit. You probably fit. I know it's a seven bushel catcher, but when you pack it off and you move it more like nine or ten, honestly, um, this thing's perfect for just regular grass, regular bagging. Same thing with dry leaves. So if you have just a regular yard, you know, covered with dry leaves, this thing is amazing. Um, it'll turn them into powder, and it'll fill up these bags. You can do an entire pile. I think you do like half a yard by just, by just, um, just one bag, you know, because it, it'll shred it up so fine. Use the mulching blades with it, so you never really want to run high lifts with this, just because they're not, that it'll jam up too fast, and it'll, Fill up these bags too fast. You always kind of want the mulching blades. Um, so yeah, let's, I'll show you guys how you take it off, take it off, and put it back on. So this here's your tube. Um, easy kind of. It comes off. You gotta wiggle it a little, little bit, but it comes off here, and then you have a rubber uh, bungee cord that holds it on there. Uh, here's your vacuum system. So the way it works is this pulley here. It's on a bearing with a spring. So you push it in, and you can see it'll release tension on the belt. So all you really gotta do, lower, you drop your deck down so you have room to get it off and then push this in and unloose the belt. It's that it's that easy to get it on and off. And then you have a pin here, pull out your pin. And then you have a pin down here, pull this out. And then all you have to do, I loop my belt around here just so it doesn't it doesn't get all tangled up, but all you do, you lift it up and it comes right off. Um, while this is off, I'll go over the biggest complaint that I have about this vacuum and the biggest reason that I don't really like it is because of these two baffles right here. So the way these work is they funnel the grass into a smaller space so they can fit inside here. And now these are fine when all you're doing is bagging. But if you're switching from side discharging to bagging often, you know, like once a week, twice a week, then it's really not fun because you have to go all the way under here, climb under here, there's two bolts you take off and this, this bracket comes off. And then you have two more on this one. And that's just to switch. It takes a good 10 minutes just to switch from bagging to mulching. So if you're doing that often, it's not a fun time. That's why I'd rather just have a bag I can throw on the side. 
Obviously, you won't get the capacity out of it, but it's a lot easier to just go back and forth. You can see here's your mulching blades. Um, this is a different different pulley, so this one's not stocked. They have an additional place for your belt to loop on. This is your bracket that holds on your bag. And then you can see the bag runs around here. So uh, down here, like I said, there's your brackets. And the, the reason that I care so much about these brackets is because these brackets, they bend like they're made of plastic. I have a couple back here I can show you guys. So come around here. Come around here. Here's obviously one of the pulleys. This bent, I'll go into that in a minute. But you can see, here's one. Here's another one of them. So you can see, the way that these work is they bolt on here and then they have these. This connects to the front of the deck, but you can see just how like wobbly this is. And like this one, because this will bring the vacuum out of the trailer. This sticks down a little bit from your actual vacuum. So your vacuum sits about right here. And this sticks down, and this will catch on anything that you go over. So you make like a too sharp turn, it'll rip into the ground. There's bumps in the ground it'll catch. Going down curbs and up curbs it'll catch. Backing on and off the trailer it catches, and it just rips these to shreds. Like you can see this one's really bad. Um, which it's fine when I'm doing it, because I am conscious of it, and like I know what's going on. And like I can kind of, I can judge so this doesn't happen, but I have guys who run my equipment for me, so it's like they they're not really like they don't care. Let's be honest, to not break these. And I think these are like they're fifty or sixty dollars a piece, and we went through like eight or nine of them this summer. So you know, something to watch out for if you're gonna buy one of these. We'll go into the story with this pulley here. So if we come around here, you can see. We've got this pulley down here, which I talked about as an aftermarket pulley. And this was sitting on there like this one day. And since you have the added height, since this is two pulleys high, it bangs into the into the side of the mower right here. And so it bent this pulley to crap. Now I tried to bend it back as you can see, but at the beginning it was completely like pushed down to here. So obviously that's an issue. I think this pulley was like $110 if I remember correctly. So not too big of a deal, but still, it's an annoyance you have to deal with. You have to get the part ordered, and it knocks you out of commission for a few days. Same thing with these plates. When you bend these, you can't use the vacuum. So if you have yards you have to bag, you're kind of you're kind of out of luck for those couple days till you get your parts in. Um, coming around here, the tube is fine. Never had a problem with the tube. Obviously, it's a rubber tube. You're not gonna have problems. This texture. Super nice, you can see, just your, here's your latch here, just your rubber band, it opens and closes, nice, it has springs that hold it up, so you don't have to hold it up. You see the springs are come around back here, here's your springs, you got four, and this catcher, the only thing that holds it to this plate is these two pins, which is super nice, because if you're switching, you don't want to keep this on, so all you do, you open up these two pins, just like the pins down there, and this comes right off, super easy. Coming around back to here, this is another one of the huge complaints I have with this bag. So if we open this, you can see these bags are destroyed. There's like a hundred zip ties on each of these. And that's because these bags, the fabric itself, it ripped. And these bags just ripped straight off the motor. So like they just came right off. And you can see back here, it happened again. So I, this happened two times. So the first time it happened, I tried to just like sew them back on and use them. Then it happened again, and I was like, you know what, screw this. So I put on a ton of zip ties, and I put on some hose clamps, and they're holding up. And these bags have to be some, like, the worst quality I've ever seen. Like, the material is nice, but the, whatever they do to hold them on, I think it's, like, stitched, it does not hold up. Um, and this was just regular weekly use, you know, not even, like, chucking it on the ground hard or throwing it anywhere, but just regular use. They broke, and they ripped, and... Again, the bag was, until I could fix it, the bag was out of commission for a couple of days. So, just, it's it's the inconveniences you don't expect to deal with when, you, when you're buying a, I think this bag was like $2,700 total. So, when you're spending that much on a bag, these are just kind of things you don't want to, don't want to have to deal with. Um, okay, but these bags, are, when they were working, they're super easy to just put on and off. There's a series of... You got two for each bag, but the metal comes up and then it just clips on just like that. These bags will fill up super tall, super nice. 
uh, stays closed, never really had any problems with it coming open. You can leave this system on if you would like to. So you don't have to take this whole thing off to side discharge if you don't want. I do just because you can get in tighter areas. And then I know, we can here, I'll slap this back on for you to see, but I'd say this here is about 60 pounds. So it's not necessarily light, but it's not terrible. This goes back on super easy, like you can see. Um, belt just kind of, belt runs around here. And lower your deck. It's the same, same thing to put it on, just loops around, you tighten it. Uh, the belt looping around here, it's all twisted up. So it kind of, it shreds belts. I'd say we went through about one every month and a half to two months just because of the way it's all like twisted up in here, but that's normal. I talked to my guy at the dealer and he said that that's just kind of because it's all like twisted up in here and tight. Um, that's kind of the same as any vacuum. And then you have your two pins that go back on. So this one, this one will go through here. There's a hole that it slides through. You kind of just have to get it adjusted right and then it'll, it'll go in. Um, somehow yeah whatever i'll deal with it in a little bit but this one goes down here and then your tube this one just slides right down here it straps on and then it slides down here so it's super easy to take on and off only takes like i said about 10 minutes baffles and everything so if you want to switch it's not horrible it's just about you have to do it and then one of the biggest questions that i had when buying this is how far does it really stick out from the mower? So, Because I, I know I couldn't find anything online. There's no one who shows how far out the sticks. And for people like me, it's a big deal because we're going through gates and we're going through in trailers. Like my trailer is seven feet wide. So I wanted to make sure that this would fit and I wouldn't have to take it out off every time to go in the trailer. So down here, you can see from the edge of the deck, it only sticks out, I'd say about eight inches so this is a 48 if you had a 52 you could still put it on a five foot wide trailer it would be really tight anything bigger than that you need a six um so if you have a six foot wide open trailer this will definitely fit on a 48 even a 61 you could fit it because it only adds about eight inches this uh the fan itself is about six inches wide and then this adds about an inch and a half so overall about seven and a half so we'll go with eight just to give you some room uh, if you come up here, you can see, so the catcher itself, it adds about, if it comes back here, I'd say it adds about two feet off the side of the mower. Yeah, about two feet. So this will stick out two feet from the edge of your deck, which isn't that big of a deal because if you have an open trailer, because these will just swing right out of the way. If you have an enclosed, you want to make sure that you're going to need a seven and a, a seven foot or an eight and a half wide. You couldn't use a six foot or five foot wide enclosed for this. Because like I said, it'll stick out about two feet. And then if you come back here, it sticks about 32 inches or so off the back. So again, lengthwise, I think the mower is probably six feet. So you add another two and a half feet or so onto that, and you're about eight and a half, nine feet. So. If you're going to be transporting this a lot, make sure that it'll fit in your trailer. Like I said, I didn't see a lot of stuff online about this and I looked. So I wanted to kind of put it out there how much, how big and how, how much this actually sticks off and how, what you have to deal with. So yeah, overall, like I said, I like this. Using it day in and day out in the summer, it's super nice. Besides the few issues that I have with it, which the bags, there's no excuse for this. It's just lousy stitching or whatever. But the... The plates under there, that's our own fault. You know, we hit it on stuff, we bent it. So it's kind of our fault, just kind of a sad design. But like I said, if you know to watch out for that and you're the one running your mower, it's not a big deal. You won't go through as many as we did. Um, so that's just something to watch out for. But overall, I like this mower a lot, or this banger a lot. It's super nice, like I said, in a weekly growth, normal grass when you're cutting, no complaints. It'll bag, it'll, it'll do what you think it'll do, so. Then leaves, it'll do leaves, wet leaves, I uh, just go a little bit slower. I never really had it jam up. I only had it jam up if you're trying to cut like foot tall grass, then it'll jam up a little bit. But for the most part, you know, it's been nice. I've liked it. Never really 
no real complaints besides the stuff we broke. And so if you're just gonna use it on day-to-day -day grass, day-to-day -day dry grass, you'll love it. So yeah, alrighty guys, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, share with your friends, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. And um, so like I said in the last video, leave in the comments if there's any videos you guys wanna see, ideas for video stuff you guys would wanna see. Cause you know, like I said, I'm just starting off with all this, so I don't really know yet. What, I'm gonna sh what I would like to make videos upon. So if you guys have any good ideas, let me know down in the comments below.